Welcome everyone to another video. Today I want to talk about this thing. Now, this is something that you may have seen already in, I think, two or maybe even three videos on this channel before. And every single time I've used it together with, with a satellite LNB to supply power to it and to control it use, using these various switches. And in this video I kind of want to just take it apart and show you what it does. Firstly, we have these three connectors. We have two coax, coaxial connectors. These are F connectors. And then we have a, a barrel jack DC connector. This is where the 5 volt input comes in. And of course we have the RF and RF DC ports. So these are the three standard connections of a bias T. Now I do have a standalone bias T or a more basic bias T over here. This is, uh, this is actually specifically made to power TV antennas as you can tell by these connectors. And again, we have the, th the three signature ports of a bias T. We have the, the DC input. And one of these is gonna be the RFDC port for this. We can actually open it up and see what's inside. This is quite literally the most basic variant of a bias T. We have the capacitor and we have an inductor and that's it. And looking at where the inductor is connected, it's over here. So this is the RFDC port and this is the RF only port. And this is of course the DC only port. Uh, this thing kinda, takes that and adds another functionality to it. So we have a bunch of switches. Uh, first one is the master switch, which just connects the DC port. If this is turned off, nothing works except this indication LED, which lights up. And I can actually show it to you without talking about it. I'm gonna plug it into the computer. And yeah, you can see by default only the off LED is on, which basically only indicates that it's getting power. We can turn the thing on and the rest of the LEDs light up, light up except these two and I'm gonna talk about those later. Uh, at the other end we have the bias switch which is just another on off switch for the RFDC port. And if we turn this on, now it is acting as a normal bias T. Uh, you will also notice that this voltmeter is not accurate at all because it costs less than one dollar and to be completely honest it's there mainly for aesthetic purposes and to give me some indication that I'm getting some voltage in. I probably should replace this with a, with a digital one in the future version. I guess we'll we'll see what's gonna happen with that. But right now it would act as a normal bias T because the on switch turns the on switch connects the DC port and the bias switch connects it to the RF DC port. However, it has some extra functionality. Uh, we can actually turn on built-in step-up converters, and as you can see, the voltage increases. Currently it's set to 13 volts, so now we have 13 volts on the RFDC output and we can switch it to 18 volts on the RFDC output. Here it's actually more accurate. Uh, this is of course if you've paid attention and or if you watched my previous videos at all. Uh, by varying the voltage like this, we can actually control the polarization of universal satellite TV LNBs basically. Uh, as you know, if you power an LNB with 13 volts, at least in case of the universal European Astra LNBs. Uh, if you power it with 13 volts, you get vertical polarization. If you power it with 18 volts, you get horizontal polarization. And that's how you can control that using this box. We have one more switch over here, which is labeled as 22K. This stands for 22 kilohertz. And when we turn this on, uh, inside this box is a basically a 22 kilohertz signal generator. All it does is it generates a sine wave Hopefully, actually it may be a square wave, we will see, uh, at a frequency of 22 kHz and it injects it into the RFDC port as well. By injecting a 22 kHz control signal into the power supply of an LNB, at least an LNB that supports it, uh, just like we have switched polarizations with the uh, voltage switch, we can actually switch the local oscillator frequency using the 22 kHz control signal by default. Uh, KU band LNBs, universal KU band LNBs will be 9.75 GHz. If we turn on the signal generator, it will basically tell the LNB that we want it to switch to 10.6 GHz. And the reason I want all of this functionality included on this one box, under normal operation, all of this signaling would be done by our satellite tuner, by our set -top box. This way I can connect an SDR to the RF port, which obviously has no functionality like that. It can only supply 5 volts. But with this box, we actually get the entire functionality of the LNB available to our available for our SDR use. So that's how it kind of works. And now let's take it apart. 
There are four legs on the box and they also house the screws which hold the entire thing together. So it's quite easy to take apart. You just take out all four screws. Once all of these screws are loose, the, the, the legs should just come out. That was pretty loud. You can see the screws just go through the entire case. And now we should be able to lift the upper cover. And I'm gonna warn you, what you're gonna see, what you are about to see, is not very nice at all. <laughs> okay. Here are the internals. Oh. The voltmeter is just falling apart completely, that's, that's okay. As you can see, everything is mounted on a one-sided PCB. This is one of the hardened paper PCBs, extremely cheap. Uh, there isn't really any wiring on the other side, so I don't I don't think I have to take the entire thing out because we can kind of see everything from, from this angle. So let's start over here, which is the DC connector. Of course, we have the ground, which is just common with everything else. Uh, this is the ground wire which goes to the PCB and this wire is for the LED. So you can see it's just stripped here and then goes all the way around and that's how the LEDs are grounded. And then of course the main DC power input wire which is where the 5 volts from the USB connector would be goes to the first main switch so this is the switch which just enables the entire thing. Uh, when it's flipped off which it currently is it only powers the red LED which is below the switch over here and uh, when it flips on it powers the green LED instead and it sends the power using these two wires further to the other switches. The other switch next to it which is what this wire is connected to is the step up converter enable switch. Now this one is actually a bit different from the from the first one. It doesn't just enable the step up converters when it is switched to be off. It actually sends those 5 volts to the PCB directly and it just bypasses all of these converters and you can kind of see it over here if I move move this. You can see I have another fourth position over here which just bypasses the entire thing. And this is where the 5 volts would go when the setup converters are disabled. Uh, the next switch, of course, is the voltage selection switch, which has the two different colored wires. When the step up converter switch is enabled, instead of this wire, the 5 volts is sent through this wire to the voltage selection switch, which just then sends it further down to one of these two converters, either, excuse me, one of these two, either 13 volts or 18 volts. Again, those are just connected to the same output as those 5 volts, which would normally bypass it. I've also added like ferrites at the positive and negative output of, of each of these parts. I don't think they really do anything, but hey, they are there. Uh, the second to last switch is connected directly to the first one. So when this is switched on, it just turns on the 12 volt step up converter which as you can see has a different path, it doesn't just go into the output, it actually goes on this wire into this box over here and I'm gonna try to show it to you what it is. So this right here is the 22 kilohertz signal generator and if we take a look inside we can actually see that it is based on a 555 timer circuit. Basically all this does is when this switch this switch is flipped on it injects the 22 kilohertz uh, control signal into the BIOS-T part. And of course we have the BIOS-T over here so this is the same thing as I've shown you before except it has F connectors so inside is again just a capacitor and just an inductor and it's the simplest BIOS-T circuit that's basically possible. Both of these have a DC barrel jack connecting to them and the input of this BIOS-T is wired over here and it is not actually connected directly to the outputs of either this bypass or the two uh, step-up converters. It actually kind of takes a detour over here through this wire, which you can, can't really see, and it goes into these two white wires, which of course are the final bias switch on the output and the reason I've done this so I can enable the step up converters and switch between them without having the load connected to them because I've I found out with the older version of this that if you have a load connected like an LNB 
and you turn on these very cheap step-up converters, it, it just leads to a USB current surge and the voltage drops and it doesn't really work. You have to disconnect the load, turn this on and then connect the load probably so the capacitors can charge. I don't really know, I don't really care. All I know is that this kind of helped, but sometimes this still causes a USB power surge as you have seen in the previous video. So again, that's why I want to rebuild this entire thing. But yeah, that's that's kind of everything that there is to it. Of course, we have a voltmeter, which is kind of falling apart. As I said, this is extremely cheap. I've added that just as an extra indication that we actually do have some changing voltage on the output. So here it goes into the switch and this is the return path from the switch, which goes into the bias T and this is monitoring the voltage before the switch basically. It's not really that complicated. Okay, I just wanted to have an excuse to use to use these switches. Now, one thing that I actually have to say about this and that I, that I think may be useful to some of you is that if you are, if you like me, are tempted to use these switches for your projects, I, I highly advise against it because they are very fragile. Maybe I'm just buying the wrong kind of switches from a bad supplier, but you can already see it's very easy to bump them like this, push on them, and it just breaks the spring mechanism inside. You can kind of see it over here, uh, the step up converter enable switch. I'm going to focus on it so you can see it better. I already bumped it a little and now it basically takes no force to flip it. It almost falls under its own weight. Yeah, that, that shouldn't be happening. It's hard to convey that on video, but this switch is very, very broken. And this blue plastic, which they use to encase the switches in, it melts extremely fast at very low temperatures. So it's very difficult to solder anything onto these without damaging those switches. And because they are spring loaded, once this plastic softens even a little bit, the switch just kind of slides out and the entire thing jumps up and you can throw it out. So yeah, not the best kind of switch for, for projects like this. It's a very cool looking switch. It's nice, it, it feels nice when it's not broken, but yeah, this one is just not very good. And that's again, another reason why I really want to just make another better version of, of this controller. This already, I think is like the third or maybe the fourth version of, of a device that I, that I made to control LNB. Uh, polarization and local oscillator. I'm gonna try to dig up the footage from my old unlisted videos and put it on screen so you can see what I'm talking about. But you know what, even despite all of the issues that this thing has, I'm still quite happy with how it turned out. Let's see if it works. It it really makes it easier to control the LNBs uh, as you have seen me, as you have seen me demonstrate in the previous videos. You can see one Slight mistake that I've made is this switch when you turn it on due to the way it's wired up both of these LEDs light up instead of just just this one So again in a few in in the future revision I actually want to have an entire custom PCB made and we can actually have separate power supply for the LEDs Because right now the LEDs are wired up directly to the switch So if we take a look at the bias the output switch it's probably washed out a lot on screen. You can see the brightness of the of the LED increases and it's most apparent when I disable the step-up converter. Because basically the LED is just wired up directly to the to the output. But yeah, uh, that's everything I wanted to show you, I think. Once again, not a very interesting video, just like the previous one. You'd be surprised how difficult it is to come up with, with topics for videos. I can just receive satellites on camera because that that's always the same thing. <laughs> that's it for this video. I hope you... Mm, you probably didn't enjoy it. Maybe you just learned something. Basically TLDR, don't use these switches, don't use cheap voltmeters. And that's it. <laughs> I'm going to have an entire future video about how you can build a simple bias T like this on your own because obviously all of this functionality, that is not something that you're gonna need. And even I mainly use this just as a simple bias T by disabling the step-up converter and just sending 5 volts from the USB of my computer to power amplifiers for SDR. So all of this basically becomes redundant. So I'm, I am going to show you in how you can build a simple bias T on your own. Again, that, 
there's there's a future video topic for now i once again thank you for watching and i'm going to see you in the next video which hopefully will contain the thing which i've ordered so we'll see